Hey, well, hello, everybody. I'll call the meeting to order. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to the regular monthly meeting of the Board of Commissioners held for the purpose of transacting the general business of the township. Today's date is September 15th, 2021. The meeting is being conducted in person at the Springfield Township Administration Building. This meeting is also being offered in a live stream feature and will be made available on the township website beginning tomorrow morning. Comments will not be accepted remotely, but instructions for submitting public comment in advance were provided as part of the posted agenda. So now please stand and join the Board of Commissioners in a moment of silence reflection, honoring the servicemen and women who place themselves in harm's way in order to help preserve our safety at home and overseas. Pledge allegiance to the flag, the United States of America. Hang on, Beard. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. He's rusty. Okay. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you. So I'd like to entertain a motion dispensing with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting as written and recorded in the official minute book of the township. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Please record unanimous vote. Okay. Um, I will note the absence of Commissioner Harbison tonight. And we have no... Uh, Substitute professionals, I don't see. And uh, Mr. Shaw in the, there is uh, Commissioner Shaw, who is in attendance, our former commissioner. And John Berger is here, our former project manager. <laughs> yep. So make a few announcements. I'd like to announce that the Board of Commissioners conducted an executive session following the workshop meeting held on September 13th, 2021 to discuss one matter of continued litigation. Okay, my next uh, announcement is the Springfield Township Community Day celebration will take place on Sunday, October 4th, 2021 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Cisco Park and will be preceded by the Erdenheim Civic Association 5K Race and Fun Run beginning at 9 a.m food, entertainment, fishing, fire equipment displays, and a petting zoo will be provided free of charge. Community day is made possible via the generous support of our business community. That's that. And what I'd like to do now is just, I, I want to kind of wrap up some of the, some, you know, some, some items and, 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 and provide a little bit of a public statement on what's been going on with the Haas Lane uh, project and as we all know we've had quite a few meetings and if anybody's been you know following emails and stuff we've been uh, entertaining a lot of questions and uh, there seems to be a little bit of confusion so I'm just going to try to wrap this up for everybody kind of give everybody an idea of what's kind of going on and uh, and where we're going with that um, so the first thing is let me just sort of give you a little sort of you know uh, a primer or a primer on on how projects can get get approved in in our township or in Pennsylvania. And the first way, which is hopefully the easiest way, is you you attempt to comply with all the zoning regulations. And the way zoning regulations come about is that we, as the board, vote on or have voted on the regulations through an ordinance. But then at that point. Uh, the adjudicator of those of those uh, uh, regulations are not us anymore. It's the uh, zoning hearing board. So if you don't, if you comply, you literally do not need to do anything for for uh, you know to get approval for a project. And it's, as an example, you have a small, let's say, subdivision or something. You would go to our zoning hearing officer, officer our zoning officer, and have him review it. And if he says it's fine, then you know. We just kind of give you the stamp of approval, and it, if it's a, if it's a, a land development, it still has to go through planning. 
but it's approved at that point. So uh, the next point, the next way of doing this is if it doesn't comply, if, if a, a developer or a builder decides that they want to do this, but there are reasons why they need variances or exceptions or conditional uses, or there are all sorts of ways of sort of, you know, bending the rules. And typically what you have to do is explain to the zoning hearing board that you have a hardship and, and an easy hardship. If you can imagine this is something like you have a, let's say most people have a square lot and you have a setback, but let's say you have a, a building and the lot narrows down to a kind of a point and you just can't fit your building into that point. So you're gonna to go to the judge, or the, I'm sorry, the zoning hearing board, and you're gonna say, could you please give me a variance? Because except for the fact that this thing narrows down to a, you know, a three inch, you know, point, I would, I would you know, comply with your, uh, your rule. And if they think it's a hardship, they'll grant it. And that will run with the property and you can do what you want with that property. So, and then the third thing is, the third way of doing this is um, through, let's just say a developer decides that, you know, if they were to go to the zoning hearing board and ask for a variance because literally the use of the property does not comply with the use that's actually, you know, designated by the zone, they're going to they would and and they would probably get denied by the by the zoning hearing board. They would come to us and say, "Would you do us a favor? If you know we do this, this is and and show you that we are are building a stellar property, a project that's going to be better than anything else you would build under the zoning hearing uh, under the zoning laws. Um, would you give us a text amendment or?" provide an overlay. And again, there are different ways of doing that. In that case, that's what we do. We would have a public hearing. We would provide everybody with what that new tax amendment or ordinance or whatever it is, and everybody can weigh in on that. And then, and that's how that works. Um, doesn't happen that often, uh, but that is one way of doing it. So, uh, and then the other thing is uh, that, you know, just to clarify that the distinction between zoning and planning. So zoning, when something goes to a zoning, it zoning kind of um, regulates density limits. Mostly it's, it's area limits and density and that sort of thing. Planning has much more to do with engineering. It has to do with stormwater, making sure that once a, uh, a builder has his approvals, he's going to do all those kind of things all those best management practices that are required to make sure that stormwater is handled and lighting is handled and the parking works well from a circulation point of view and you know all those kind of things. At which point, you know, we we take it to a planning commission and and the the um, the audience can the, the citizens of, of our township can come in and weigh in on that sort of thing. But at that point, the project is already approved. So that's a little bit of how, how this all works. So let me give you a little history on what happened with the Hawes Lane project. Um, many moons ago, the, um, a piece of land was uh, sold off to a group that wanted to build a uh, assisted living facility. And they got an approval for 107 units. And it, that was through the zoning hearing board. And that was challenged in court. And I don't have all the details about that. Um, what I can tell you is that at one point they decided they weren't gonna do that. They were, I, I suppose they were going to sell the property, but they did ask us, the Board of Commissioners for an extension on uh, you know, the, 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 um, the plan, like when it would expire. We denied that and lo and behold, that plan actually expired. Uh, about a month and a half ago or two months ago. It, Bear, I, just a point of clarity. Yes. Back when that was when that took place, did that actually sell or was that just under contract by the, the by the uh, facility? That's a good question. Yeah. I believe it was the Hartranft family that secured the approvals and it was <clears throat> unclear whether they intended to develop it themselves or flip it. And but a, either but a, but in, a, a transfer never occurred. No. Nah. Right okay. Yeah. Thank you. So then what happened was they, oh, they excuse me, but yeah, but a subdivision did. 
subdivision occurred before the land development. Right, right, right. Okay. Because he had, Mr. That's Hartraft right. had an option to purchase the property back That's under right. his agreement with the Harston Hall property. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. So then what happened was they, uh, they sold it to, uh, I guess, MEH. And I don't know if there was anybody in between, you know, the first buyer and, and the second, but MEH wound up with it. Um, we understood that they, they were looking for somebody to build it. They, they decided that it might be a better idea if they were to build it, not as uh, in an, an institutional use, but actually provide a 55 and over uh, apartment house. And I think the number of units they came up with was something like, was it 102, 103? It was very close to the- It was the 100, honor. close to 100, right. 100, 100 notes. And, you know, as a matter of courtesy, what we do is we, we um, they say, you know, this is what we, are, we have in mind. And we say, fine, why don't you present this to, you know, our, our citizens. And at that point, and this was about two years ago, maybe three years ago, I can't remember, but in any event, they presented it and pretty much their project got shot down by everybody. Uh, and they basically backed off the project. So fast forward, uh, you know, a while, they came back to us and said, well, we do have some assisted living people looking at it. And we think that that's what we're going to do and try to comply with zoning and it won't need any uh, you know, permission from anybody, but that didn't happen either. And the COVID thing came along. Um, and at that point they asked if either the township or the school board would want to purchase a property. The school board, base, their, their basic position is they will not purchase a property unless they have a specific use for the property. That's what they tell us. Um, and they didn't, so they didn't do anything. We, um, through our Grant Master Brandon Ford, sort of time low for um, uh, some some funds to to finance such a, a purchase, and we found none. And it turns out that, uh, as an example, Natural Lands Trust uh, will you know buy land. Uh, they're they're looking at at buying big parcels of land in the northeast, uh, you know, many many acres, but. But this is a very small property and it's just under their radar and they just, they or anybody else, they just don't have the, the, the funds. And the other thing that we could have done is, is purchase it. You know, if, if we were to purchase it, it probably would have been something in the, on the, in the neighborhood of a quarter of our yearly budget. We certainly don't have the cash for that. And as far as raising, you know, funds for it and by, by floating a bond or something, borrowing money, the thing is we've already floated a pretty substantial you know bond or or you know we now have you know some bank financing for the um uh municipal campus and it's really a tight squeeze to do that plus it would certainly raise taxes for everybody in the township um so we didn't do that either so then more time went by and uh meh decided that they, they brought in a housing developer, uh, specifically a developer of townhouses. And again, they said, uh, would you entertain that kind of a project, you know, with the idea that if people are okay with this project, maybe we'll do a text amendment or some kind of a thing. Um, and we said, well, why don't you run it by the, the public? And we had a public hearing, uh, not a public hearing, we, we went through the planning commission and that was back in June. And at that point they offered, uh, a project that was 41 units um, and pretty much to a man and or woman you know in the in that that audience they 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 told us under no certain terms that they didn't like that project and so they went back to the drawing board and then two months later they came in with another plan you know whereby they had dropped i think it was five units so they got down to 36 units and again same kind of thing happened we didn't get any real support for that project we didn't get a lot of comment about how that would compare to an institutional use um but be that as it may um they told us last week at the end of last week that they were going to retract that project now, what they did do is they came in on 
uh, into our workshop on uh, Monday, and I guess it was just sort of one one last uh, sort of stab at trying to figure out what people really felt, you know, uh, if they were to let's say re-engineer this a little bit more and you know look at it specifically with respect to is this better or worse and and a uh, in institutional use what does the audience think and i would say that that was somewhat inconclusive some people said well townhouses seem better i wouldn't mind that if it were 20 units but you know 32 units or 35 units or something like that is way too much some other people just don't want to see anything built there at all and some people got up and said you know i don't really have a problem with institutional use we you know there was somebody who's i think a nurse trained nurse said that you know she she works in a certain facility that is just fine and it, and they handle the traffic and everything well and she could envision the same kind of thing happening at this site so that was the last that we heard from uh that group um so i will just say that at this point uh you know I, I i won't say that they won't come back and talk to us but i would say that the chances of of that happening with respect to a town townhouse project are you know much lower than they have been um and what they tell us is that they are going to go ahead and uh pursue uh, a an institutional use of some sort and they believe that they can find somebody that can come in and uh do that by right meaning they can comply to all the zoning regulations that apply to that site which means that nobody will have the opportunity to you know debate them on that because they'll have the right to do it now certainly when it gets into the planning and engineering stage everybody can weigh in at that point but that's basically where we are so that is sort of you know as far as Haas Lane is concerned sort of the state of 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 the world as I know it or as we know it right now. So just wanted to kind of make those clarifications and uh thank you for you know that that time explain that. Okay, next on the agenda we have uh a couple of really exciting resolutions and uh the first one is uh I'd like to invite Don Siriani retired public works director to the front of the room to be joined by Commissioner Lee. Wait for you all to the front of the room. And I'd like to ask Commissioner Lee to read into the record. To the microphone so they can hear you. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so I'd like to ask Commissioner Lee to read into Record resolution number 1544, a resolution honoring Donald G. Siriani Jr. for 46 years of service to the Springfield Township community. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have the pleasure of um, sharing resolution number 1544, a resolution honoring and thanking Donald G. Siriani Jr. for his service to Springfield Township, Montgomery County. Whereas in 1972, Donald G. Siriani Jr., Don, a 17-year-old Springfield Township high school resident, hmm. student, excuse me, was hired by Springfield Township as a part-time seasonal laborer in the public oh, works oh, department. Whereas on January 1st, 1975, Don became a full-time member of the Springfield Township Public Works Department, performing every function within the department, including laborer, truck driver, inspector, and assistant director of public works. Whereas in 2013, Don was promoted to the position of the Director of Public Works, became a member of the Senior Management Team for Springfield Township. And whereas during his tenure as Director of Public Works, he created a team atmosphere among the employees, focused on effective systems of service delivery, strive to instill efficiencies in all operations, updated equipment, buildings, and public facilities. And whereas Don served on countless civic and professional boards commissions and emergency agencies, thereby gaining the respect of his peers and colleagues. Whereas Don played an integral part in the design and construction of the new Springfield Township Municipal Complex. And whereas Don's public service extends beyond his employment with the Township as a member of the Orland Volunteer Fire Company Number no. 1 since 1974, 
where he served as deputy chief since 1992 and treasurer since 1988. And whereas Don, whether he was assisting in the management of a response to an emergency condition to the township, preparing a facility for a community celebration or supporting a volunteer athletic association, he did so fully without hesitation and without recognition. And whereas Mr. Siriani was required to be away from his wife, Laura, and children, Andrew and Christina, on many nights, weekends, and holidays in order to serve Springfield Township. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners is hereby recognized, command, and wholeheartedly thank Mr. Siriani for 49 years of dedicated service to the Springfield Township community, and also extends best wishes to Don and his family in retirement. Unanimously adopted this 15th day of September 2021, the Board of Commissioners signed by Baird M. Standish, President. It's a resume that can take a All right. <laughs> All right. Speech, 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 speech. Do I get to take a minute of your time? Yes, yeah, please. <laughs> Well, thank I would like to thank the board for the opportunity to, and this board and all past boards the opportunity to work here for Springfield Township. Um, I've enjoyed my employment here, and thank you for the support you gave us throughout the years, uh, through funding, through equipment, through manpower. Um, thank you very much. The only thing I'd ask is maybe we should have built this building a little sooner. <laughs> <laughs> but enjoy it a little bit more. But thank you, thank you for okay, for doing there. Okay. Fantastic. So I, I'd like um, to. All right. All right. Good deal. I'd like to thank uh, the employees, um, the whole town of employees, more especially the public works department. They're the actual, we have 28 in the department. They're the actual, the, the, the guys that actually do all the work around here. It's a small crew, but they, they do a lot. And uh, they've been fantastic to work with. And lastly, my family, um, as the resolution said, at the time I spent away with my two children going up, I, I know my daughter's ninth birthday is when we had the flood in 96. So that was, <laughs> and then all, like the ice storms, um, they were trapped at home. I was trapped at work, and uh, we never got really a chance mm -hmm. to sit back and watch it snow together. But thank you for putting up with me, and appreciate it. But thank you again. It's been well, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Okay, so I'd like to move that the board of commissioners adopt resolution number one five four four. And uh, do I have a second on that? Second. Okay. Um, any comments or? Well deserved. Well deserved. Well deserved. That's right. Yeah. I'll just make a quick comment. You know, uh, been on the board a relatively short period and just um, in the short time, just getting to know Don just a little bit. He was so gracious and helpful. And um, of all the complaints we get, very few are ever about public works. It's like, <laughs> seriously, the crown jewel. And just I'm proud to brag about it, about our public works department. So mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Great. Okay, so all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. That's great. Thanks, Don. Okay, so next, I would like to invite uh, Commissioner Glenn Shaw to the front of the room to be joined by Commissioner Maxwell. And I would ask Commissioner Maxwell to read into the record resolution number 1545, a resolution honoring Glenn A. Shaw for 22 consecutive years of service as a member of the Board of Commissioners of Springfield Township. Thank you, Mr. President. Before I read this, I just read this when I sat down and there's two words that I see in here, mentor and friend. Uh, I had the privilege of working with Glenn for four years and I can honestly say uh, sitting next to him and working with him, that's the way I felt um, as a mentor and friend. And uh, Glenn, I'm honored to be reading this to you tonight. Resolution number 1545, whereas Glenn A. Shum has been a resident of Springfield Township for nearly 50 years, and whereas Mr. Shum was an active member of the community in many ways, including but not limited to the Orland Volunteer Fire Company and Orland Town Watch, and whereas Mr. Shum was sworn in as a member of the Board of Commissioners of Springfield Township in 1998, faithfully serving for 22 years as a representative for Ward 3. Whereas during his term, Mr. Shom served as the president and vice president of the board and the chairman of public safety and public works committees. And whereas Mr. Shom's 22 years of service stands today 
as the longest consecutive term of any member of the Board of Commissioners dating to 1904. And whereas in 2011, Mr. Shum was recognized by the Montgomery County Public Works Association as a recipient of the William Stewart Award for Outstanding Service. And whereas his fellow commissioners and township staff relied on his leadership, skills acquired as an officer of the fire company and his expertise in emergency management to ensure the safety of the Springfield Township community. And whereas the Board of Commissioners has recruit, recruited Glenn to continue his service to the community as an alternate member of the Police Civil Service Commission. Whereas Mr. Shaw was committed to long-term sustainability of Springfield Township, leading the township through the master planning, construction, and financing plan of its new municipal campus, as well as the creation of an emergency management response plan and an emphasis on stormwater management. And whereas Glenn will always be a mentor and a friend to leaders in the Springfield Township community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Springfield Township, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, joins the Springfield community in recognizing the contributions and the outstanding leadership of Glenn A. Shaw in our community. Unanimously adopted this 15th day of September, 2021, Board of Commissioners, Springfield Township, Baird M. Standish, President. All right, all right. Okay, good. <laughs> so I'll be very brief. Um, first, 22 years. So it didn't seem that long. I had hoped for 25 years because I think I would have got the gold watch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But I got the mask for 20 yeah, years. Yeah. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, I couldn't have done it without all of you. Um, Baird, you're next in line, Jeff. Um, Mike. Don, uh, Don was the best. I mean, uh, taught me so much. Um, it, it's, I'll share one little thing Don taught me that hmm. impacted me tremendously. We were talking about a project and talking about financing and, uh, in my early days. And when we talked about financing, the money is huge, you know? I mean, we're talking millions of dollars and you know, I'm not a millions of dollars guy. So I'm like, Don, you know, I'm really nervous. And Don says, wait a minute, you know more about the project than anybody in the audience or anybody in the community. You've studied it, you understand it, you know, be confident in yourself. And I always remembered that. So thank you, Don. Thank you, board. Baird, thank you. Jonathan. Michael. Thank you. Boss. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it's your When? Thank you. Okay, so I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1545. Um, do I have a second? Second. second. Great. Um, any comments? Okay. Um, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Okay. Now, I'd like to invite Don Berger, our retired township manager, to the front of the room to be joined by Commissioner Graham. And I'd like to ask Commissioner Graham to read into the record Resolution number 1546, a resolution honoring Donald E. Berger Jr. for 39 years of service to the Springfield Township there community. You go. Hmm. Well, Fred, uh, before I read this resolution, I'd just like to say that the, when I first got elected, Don was really a, not only a great township manager, but a close personal friend that kind of walked me to all of the nuances of this office. And I could not have asked for a better mentor, but more importantly, a better friend and family member. He was very close. To me. So um, saying that, resolution number one, uh, 1546, a resolution honoring and thanking Donald P. E. Berger Jr. for his services to Springfield Township, Montgomery County. Whereas, Donald E. Berger Jr., Don, 
was hired as the Springfield Township County Code Enforcement Officer in 1890. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, 1890, yeah. 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 My glasses get fogged up when I agree to this thing. <laughs> kind of, so my apologies. In 1980, <laughs> and served in that position until 1983. And whereas in 1983, Don was promoted to the position of assistant township manager, a position he held until December 1989. And whereas Don was appointed as township manager slash secretary, effective January the 1st, 1980, and faithfully served in that position until his retirement in July 2019. And whereas during his tenure as township manager, Don also served as the township's emergency management coordinator, calmly steering the township through countless snowstorms, snow events, and other natural, natural and man-made disasters. And whereas Don was responsible for creating one of the first curbside recycling programs in the Commonwealth to serve Springfield Township and served as a model for other municipalities across the state. And whereas Don was asked to and did humbly serve on various professional commissions and associations and committees to promote good local government, enhance intergovernmental, intergovernmental relations, and ensure reliable and sustainable public service. Whereas Don imparted knowledge and wisdom to those he mentored, compassion and selflessness to those in need and inspiration and encouragement to those he led. And whereas Don's unwavering commitment and willingness to understand and respond to the concerns of the residents of Springfield Township has made a substantial contribution to the betterment of the Township of Springfield. And whereas Don gained the unqual unqualified respect of all commissioners of Springfield Township, past and present, through his professional management and personal demeanor. And whereas Don and his lovely wife, Debbie, are lifelong residents of Springfield Township, where they chose to raise their three bright, caring children in their likeness. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners in Springfield Township, Montgomery County, does hereby recognize, commend, and thank Donald E. Berger Jr. for 39 years of dedicated service to the Springfield Township community and also extend its best wishes for a long, healthy and happy, and happy retirement. Unanimously adopted this 15th day of September, the Springfield Township Board of Commissioners Township signed by President Baird M. Standish. All right, all right, Very good. Okay, yes. so so this just a point of protocol here. I am going to um, move to the board of that the board of commissioners adopt resolution number fifteen forty six and ask for a second. Second, second. Thank you. Um, any comments? Okay. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Please accord a unanimous vote. Okay. Well, that went better than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I thought maybe you would just. Yeah. I already messed up by saying you were older than you were. You were from saying you were from 1890. <laughs> 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 All right. So don't go anywhere because I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Mr. Graham to unveil the portrait of Mr. Berger. Oh yeah. <laughs> which will be oh, displayed yeah. in the lobby of the Township Administration Building. Whoa! Whoa look at that! All right. Yeah. 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 Woo. It's a good picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That is nice. Huh? That's a little scary. <laughs> oh, you know, they're gonna put that on the two dollar bill. You know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's just that's the model, right? The, the real yeah, one is sure. six feet by ten feet. Right? Yeah, that's the that's the prototype. Oh, okay. yeah. mm -hmm. Statue, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's scary. Uh -huh. you, might want to, you might want to keep that close for like when the little. 
boys and girls come through on the floor. The greatest. Uh, well, I, thanks so much, Mike, for all these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I appreciate it. I, I guess as Don was saying, uh, nobody that has ever done any of these jobs built themselves. I mean, it's the Board of Commissioners, it's the residents on the street. It's the department heads, the guys, the police, public works, the library folks. Um, everybody just shipped in. That's been so cool about Springfield is everybody's willing to help each other and be a part of the team and be a part of the mission. Um, very infrequently, where there, I mean, there were great debates on whether it should go one way or another, but um, once the decision was made, it was all in. And it really was made it easy. Um, and fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to introduce my wife, Terry. Well, this is our uh, right hand person. All right. <laughs> uh, several years, uh, carried, the, carried the ball to get ready for his job. So I uh, really appreciate it. And thank you very much. And uh, mm -hmm. that's good. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Good good you. Thank you. Right. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Big man. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Well deserved. Thank you. Well deserved. Good seeing you. Good. Thank you, Don. Good. <laughs> yeah. Go okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got to turn. I'll go home now. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait. Before you go, I just wanted to say one thing. My name is Jim Garrity. I'm the township solicitor, and because of what I do, the kind of law I practice, I'm in a dip. I'm in a different township building almost every weeknight. Literally dozens, if not a couple hundred, in Bucks, Chester, Montgomery, and Delaware counties, and. Wherever I go, when they find out that I also represent Springfield, they, before I even say anything, they say, oh, you got Don Berger. You've got the best. Yeah, there you go. Mm. All right. And, uh, Mr. Mr. President, I just wanted to say one thing as well. Um, one thing I find that beyond the years that these three uh, gentlemen have uh, given to Springfield Township, um, they really are all cut from the same piece of wood. Uh, I mean, they're all just extraordinary, uh, gentle men. Um, and one thing that is extraordinary to me is that when we have problems or issues come up in the township, to have the institutional knowledge that these three individuals in particular brought uh, from their experience, having grown up in the township, uh, having seen all the problems they did, um, we are such an incredibly better township because of the stewardship of, of those three uh, individuals and and the, and the teams that they led. Um, so I just I think it's extraordinary. I just wanted to thank you all again for uh, your service because you really are just gentlemen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good. Now you're dismissed. Yeah, that's right. Now you're dismissed. Right. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. Don't you want to hear about the recycling report? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, yeah, we're doing better. We're doing right. better in recycling. <laughs> Who's left? Carol. Carol Stain. Carol Stain. No, no, no. I'm going. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. It's a good picture. I think it's a good picture. Excellent picture. It's a really good picture. Yeah. Who was? Huh? Oh, we should have noted it. it no, what? Stay. We'll, we'll, we'll write you up a quick plaque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Think of the size of your. I'm writing she's it. Got, I'm, she's got to type it up now. I'm writing yeah, it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, did you? Okay, okay. Very cool. That's great. Wow. Okay, so wow. here we go. The, we this go. is now we are now into the public portion of the meeting. The board is also now open to comments or questions from the public. Anyone? The board, Anyone? 
Yeah, the board draws particular attention to those items listed on the agenda this evening. Please be advised that once the committee reports begin, the board can no longer accept questions from the floor. At the conclusion of the committee reports, public comments will once again be accepted. However, official action on those issues listed on the agenda will have already taken place. Therefore, if you wish to comment on an agenda item, now would be the appropriate time. And Brandon, do we have any uh, emails or questions from the from the ether? No? Okay. Any Anybody in the audience? No? Okay. Well, thank you. We will then move on to the committee reports, and I will read my... Uh, my report first. Um, this is concerning resolution number 1541, the Laverock subdivision. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1541, a resolution approving an amendment to the rec record plan for the Laverock Springfield subdivision. The subject of the amended plan is for the limited purpose of adjusting the lot line between lot number one and the common open space for the development. The lot line adjustment will allow the rear yard of lot number one to align with the adjacent lot number numbered 26 through 32 and is possible due to the relocation of the emergency access driveway as requested by the township. So that is my motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments on the motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Okay, please record a unanimous vote. Okay, next. Uh, concerning resolution number 1542, the Freilich slash 501 Birch Lane subdivision is a two lot subdivision slash lot line change that increased the size of the parcel located at 8700 Montgomery Avenue to 1.63 acres and decreased the size of the property located at 501 Birch Lane to 0.98 acres. As part of the subdivision, the Freilich's owners of both parcels agreed to dedicate to the township a 25-foot ultimate right-of-way measured from the center line of Birch Lane. Therefore, I move the board that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1542, a resolution accepting the deeds of dedication for additional right-of-way along the East Birch Lane frontage of 8700 Montgomery Avenue, as well as 501 East Birch Lane, Winmore. And that is my motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any comments or questions on the motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please by please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Okay, please record a unanimous vote. And the next uh, final item is, uh, I move the Board of Commissioners authorize the engagement of the Montgomery County Planning Commission through a professional planning assistance contract for the years 2022 through 2024. The county provides planning assistance for the review of all subdivision and land development applications, as well as structured assistance as requested by the township and recommended by the county. The 2022 through 24 contract includes continued assistance to update the township subdivision and land development ordinance, as well as the development of a trail network plan and to begin to update the 2014 comprehensive plan. The costs associated with the contract are shared equally by Springfield Township and Montgomery County. The township share in 2022 is $14,847. In 2023, uh, it is $12,852. And in 2024, it is $12,978. So that is my motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the motion? Mr. Yes. President. Yes. Just to kind of connect this with um, what we were talking about earlier about some of these other development projects in the in the township, what this engagement with the county enables us to do is to kind of update that sort of broader comprehensive plan that we have in place and um, dust off and bring it more up to kind of where we are today. So yep. um, I, I think it's a it's a good thing that we're doing this. It's a great Partic thing, particularly with regards to the uh, the trail system. Yep. It's a great thing. Just a, a question. Um, what year, how long has this agreement been in place? I know this is a renewal. I assume there were other renewals. Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, we've been. Well, through. Um, as far as you know. The entire 25 years that I've been working. <laughs> yeah, here. yeah, a long time. So it, it dates prior to that. Do we know any municipalities that don't, that don't have a similar agreement with the county? There, um, there's, I'm sure there's others that do not, but I mean, they're, quite frankly, they're kind of foolish. Yeah. I mean, because it's a deal, yeah. you, you get 50% of the cost paid for. 
Right. And, and they're very talented people and very caring. And they have access to the grant funds that you need to complete some of your projects. That's great. Like John said, it's great that we have the yep. trail piece. Yeah, it's really great. Yep. And I know we've had some people clamoring for, you know, looking at open space and that sort of thing with respect to the uh, the comprehensive plants. And now we can dig in on that too. So great. Okay, so that concludes my report. And uh, Commissioner Harbison is we not here. You need to vote on that. Uh, we do. We do. I'm sorry. Yeah, we do. So uh, um, I, I made the motion. So do we have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Any questions, comments? We've already had some. Okay, so all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 aye fate. Uh, any opposed, say nay. Okay, please record a unanimous vote. Okay. All right, so that concludes my report and Commissioner Harbison is not here. So um, Commissioner Wilson is going to read Commissioner Harbison's report and then go into his report, go into Ms. Uh, Commissioner Wilson's report. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. I have six items tonight. And including five of Jeff's and one of mine. But the first is the bill listing. I move that the Board of Commissioners approve the August check reconciliation in the amount of $561,766.30 and the September bill listing in the amount of $542,737.67. That is my motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Okay, please record a unanimous vote. My next item, Mr. President, is the uh, announcement for the 2022 budget schedule. And I'm, I'm pleased to announce that the following dates uh, uh, we'll be using for the uh, 2022 budget. Um, First one is meeting with support agencies, Wednesday, September the 22nd at 7 p.m. The second one will be the budget workshop meeting, Wednesday, October the 20th at 7 p.m. The next one is the budget presentation, which will take place on Wednesday, November the 10th at 7.30 p.m. Next one will be the budget hearing, which will take place on Wednesday, December the 8th at 7.30 and lastly, the budget adoption, which would be uh, Wednesday, December the 8th uh, at 7.30. And please note that all these meetings will be held at the Springfield Township Administrative uh, Building, 1510 Springfield, pa sorry, uh, Paper Mill Road, uh, Widmore. So right here, all those. Uh, my next... My next item is, is resolution number 1543, Pension Fund MMO. And the Board of Commissioners has a statutory obligation to adopt a resolution setting forth the municipal, the minimum municipal obligation to properly fund the township employees pension plans and to incorporate the minimum municipal obligation into the succeeding year's township budget. So therefore my motion is that uh, I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution Number 1543, a resolution establishing, establishing the 2022 pension fund minimum municipal obligation for, for the three defined benefits and one defined contribution pension plan. That is my motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. My next item is a report on the township auditors uh, and a resolution. I move the Board of Commissioners reappoint B. Bergval and company certified public accountants to serve as the township's auditors to audit the township's financial statements for the year beginning December 31st, 2021 consistent with the audit engagement letter dated September 7, 2021. The cost of the engagement is $23,500, which is a 2.1% uh, increase more than it was for 2020. The 2020 rate uh, of 23,000 was the same as was charged in 2019. That's my motion. 
Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments on the motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Okay, the third of Jeff's reports uh, is on the tank car property. And I'm pleased to report on May the 18th, 2021, the Honorable Jeffrey S. Saltz, Judge of the Court of Common Pleas from Montgomery County, issued a decision in the matter involving Springfield Township's condemnation of property owned by Tank Car Corporation of America, 1725 Walnut Avenue, Orland. The court's decision established the just compensation and fee reimbursement requirements to be paid by Springfield Township as the condemnor to Tank Corps Corporation of America as condemnee pursuant to the eminent domain code. The Tank Corps Corporation of America subsequently appealed the court's decision to the Commonwealth Court. After reviewing the court's decision with the township solicitor, I move that the Board of, Co of Commissioners authorize the township solicitor to file a cross appeal in response to the appeal filed by Tank Corps Corporation of America on such issues as the township solicitor shall deem appropriate. Thank you. That's um, my motion. Thank you. My do first motion on the on the on this issue. Okay. And do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments on the motion? Quick, quick uh, question for our solicitor. In layman's terms, a cross appeal to an appeal is essentially what? Well, it, we felt that the decision rendered by Judge Saltz was a very favorable decision to the township. And I, because of that, I, I, I guess I kind of predicted, sorry, I kind of predicted that, uh, that, that an appeal would be taken. Um, had an appeal not been taken, we would not have appealed, I, I don't believe. Um, but because they took an appeal, I think we should take an appeal on the, on at least, at least the one issue where the judge did not render a favorable decision to the township. Um, so that there are um, both an appeal and a cross appeal and both sides have something to lose if they go forward. Um, and otherwise we, we would have, um, nothing to argue about and they they could only improve their situation whereas now they have the risk with our cross appeal of having a situation that is not even as good as they have now mm -hmm. thank you sure. okay anybody else okay so um all in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed say nay please record a unanimous vote Okay, my last motion is, in addition, I move the Board of Commissioners authorize the appropriate township official, officials to arrange to pay into court the amount of the just compensation and fee reimbursement awarded by the court's May 18, 2021 decision in order to prevent any claim from additional comp in addition to prevent any claim for additional compensation for delay in the payment in accordance with the eminent domain code. That is my motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Uh, another quick question. In terms of uh, timing, uh, is there any sort of expectation that we can relay to the public when this next round of appeals may be? I, I, it would be my um, belief that it would be somewhere between nine and 12 months. Okay. And the decision, I have one question, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. And the decision to prevent any uh, additional uh, penalties being attached to the township, is that going to begin as of the day of your appeal or as of May the 18th? As of the, yeah, it only as of the date that we put the money into court. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So um, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Okay, Mr. President, my uh, last report is my own report on recycling. Okay. I'm pleased to report that during the month of August 2021, Springfield Township residents recycled 160.38 tons of materials with a householder participation rate of 
0.9%. The net cost for the month was 15,153.53. Thank you. That concludes your report then? Yes, concludes my report. Okay, thanks. Okay, so next up is uh, our chairman of Parks and Recreational Resources Committee, Commissioner Graham. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I have one resolution tonight. Uh, resolution number uh, 1547, the Pico Green Region Program. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1547, a resolution authorizing a grant application to be submitted to the Pico Green Region Grant Program in the amount of $5,000. The purpose of this of the grant is to conduct a township wide trail study that is my motion thank you do we have a second second okay any questions or comments on the motion this is i think you know i i believe that the the county was charging us something in the neighborhood of four to five thousand dollars for the mm -hmm. the mapping portion and this would cover at least half of that is that mm -hmm. correct yeah so it's great okay um uh all in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. and the opposed say nay all right, please record a unanimous vote. And that concludes my report, Mr. Okay. Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Graham. Okay, next we have the chairman of our Public Safety Committee, Commissioner Michael Maxwell. Thank you, Mr. President. My first item is entry level police officer. I move that the Board of Commissioners extend a conditional offer of employment as a probationary police officer in the Springfield Township Police Department to Eliza Torres, Devereaux Avenue, Philadelphia, PA, effective October 11th. 2021. The condition of employment is successfully passing a physical and psychological examination. Ms. Torres has been employed as a police officer with the Philadelphia Police Department since 2017, where she is a member of the major incident response team and has completed specialized training in crisis intervention and hazardous material operations. That is my motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the motion? I just have one comment. I am very appreciative of Chief Pitko's effort, along with our township manager, uh, in securing a Hispanic female uh, that speaks fluent Spanish in order uh, to have our police department reflect the diversity of the community. I am very, uh, Chief Pitko, my kudos go out to you and to our township manager. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she's a really stellar uh, candidate. So um, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, and any opposed say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Uh, my next item is resolution number 1548, traffic signal maintenance agreement. I move that the board of commissioners adopt the resolution number 1548. Resolution authorizing the execution of a township wide traffic signal maintenance agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. The agreement applies to all traffic signals owned and maintained by the township. That is my motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments on the motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, any opposed say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Uh, next item is resolution number 1549, a disaster declaration. I move that the board of commissioners adopt resolution number 1549. A resolution confirming a disaster declaration issued by the emergency management coordinator in association with the remnants of Hurricane Ida on September 1st, 2021. That is my motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Final item is the state fire parade. I move that the Board of Commissioners grant permission to both the Flowertown and Orland Fire Companies to attend the Pennsylvania State Firemen's Association Parade in Limerick, PA on Saturday, September 25th, 2021. Permission must be sought by the fire companies pursuant to section 34-2.1K of the Springfield Township Code which requires the fire companies to secure permission from the township when their activities take them further than a 20 mile radius of the township. 
The permission relates to insurance coverages provided by the township to the fire companies. The two fire chiefs have made arrangements to ensure proper fire coverage. That is my motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the motion? I have one question. Is the is the uh, parade open to the public? It is. Okay. And have you been? Yes, <laughs> I used to march in them. Okay. Uh, fun. Good fun. Family good event. Time. Yes, you get to see uh, several hundred fire vehicles. Uh, I'm not sure what the size of this one's going to be, but um, if anybody's interested in going, uh, I'm hearing rumors that this may be the last one ever. Hmm. In Pennsylvania, so in Pennsylvania, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so it's now or never. Yeah, and nice and close. Yeah, and they're close. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. Okay, um, and that concludes my report for this evening, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Maxwell. Okay, next we have the chairman of our zoning committee, Commissioner Cobb. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the next. Zoning Hearing Board of Springfield Township will meet on Monday, September 27th at 7 p.m. at the Springfield Township building to receive testimony on the following two applications. The first application is from B.B. Pisani, owner of the property located at 811 Pleasant Avenue in Winmore. The applicant has requested a dimensional variance to relocate the existing shared property line with 813 Pleasant Avenue in Winmore, and have that property line be the shared party wall of the existing garage. The variances requested are to allow the existing garage to be on the property line, and the proposed relocated property line would increase the impervious coverage on the site from 60.6% to 61%. Property is zoned within the D residential district of Ward 5. And uh, the second application is also from uh, B.B. Pisani, owner of the same reference property, uh, this one located at 813 Pleasant Avenue in Winmore. Um, and again, the applicant is requesting a dimensional variance uh, to seek approval to relocate the existing shared property line um, that is uh, the shared party wall of the existing garage. Copies of the application are available, available for review in the Community Development Office during normal business office hours. And again, those two applications will be heard Monday, September 27th at 7 p.m. Uh, here in the public meeting room of the Township Building. And that's my report. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Cobb. Mm -hmm. Okay, and finally we have a report from the Chairman of our Public Works and Facilities Committee, Commissioner Lee. Thank you, Mr. President. I have two items this evening, although I'd like to Add a little bit to your announcement about Community Day. I don't know if you mentioned it, but this year there will be a dunk tank as part of Community Day. I will be filling one of the slots, and we'll probably have some other interesting people filling the slots. So I just want the public <laughs> to know the additional opportunity to inflict pain on various individuals. <laughs> part of the fun. So staff too is, is it available to Springfield staff. I think anyone can oh, throw a ball. Okay, okay. Good. anyone can get good. <laughs> yeah. Steel eyes coming my way. <laughs> <laughs> why. Yeah. Um, the first uh, official item: I move that the Board of Commissioners authorize the appropriate township officials to execute a trail maintenance agreement with Troy and. Deborah Dobson, uh, 1110 Church Road in Orland. The agreement permits the township to construct a paved pedestrian trail along the frontage of the Dobson property. And in exchange, the Dobsons have agreed to maintain, repair, and replace the trail, including the removal of snow and ice and the trimming of any vegetation. That is my motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any questions or comments on the motion? Just for the sake of the public, that this was in, um, in relation to the demolition of the old Enfield School, so that this would help have some connectivity from the sidewalk to the adjacent neighborhood. Yep. And that these neighbors, uh, you know, were. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really amazing. Was open and helpful ago. to do this. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Okay. Please record a unanimous vote. Second item, Mr. President, uh, is in relation to the Black Horse Inn. I move that the Board of Commissioners authorize the execution of a lease agreement between Springfield Township 
and Seven Wall Financial LLC of Flower Town, PA to lease Suite F, which is the second floor rear of the Black Horse Inn, pursuant to the conditions set forth in the lease agreement. The base rent is 1,000 per month, including utilities. That is my motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Great. Um, any questions or comments on the motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. I also move that the Board of Commissioners authorize the execution of a lease agreement between Springfield Township and Jeffrey Dean Limited, Lafayette Hill, PA, to lease suite B, first floor south of the Black Horse Inn, pursuant to the conditions set forth in the lease agreement. The base rent is $1,100 per month plus utilities. That is my motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Um, any questions or comments? Okay. And I think that, that brings us back up to 100% occupancy. I think it, it does. Is. So that's great. Yep. Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Okay. Please record a unanimous vote. Thank you, Mr. President. That concludes my report. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Lee. Okay. So that concludes our committee reports. And now the board is open to comments or questions from the public. No? Okay. Mr. President, I'd like to make a few comments. Go ahead. Relief. Yep. Um, thanks for summarizing the Halls Lane development uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, I know it's probably, you know, we're what, two and a half years mm -hmm. since first discussions. I know Jonathan and I sat in some of the households um, in some of our first meetings and we were getting absolutely roasted because we were, you know, sort of deciding that we wanted zoning to sort of weigh in and make this decision. Um, I know it's sort of been confusing for everybody, um, especially me. I'm not sure about you guys, but the perception of what the public wants changes almost as the wind blows. They were originally against the assisted living 55 and older, which if you poll a good majority of the residents in Springfield, they're looking to stay here that are in that age range. And that would be ideally at the time. That didn't fly. Just to clarify, Mike, that wasn't assisted living. That was just age restricted. Okay, it was, was age restricted. Right. Mm -hmm. So then we got into hearing from residents, at least on my side, you know, townhouses. Townhouses weren't it. They didn't want institutional. They didn't want this. They didn't want that. Um, the developer comes back with the plans for the townhouses. The feedback he was getting from a majority of these people who now showed up Monday night and from what I'm told were okay with everything. He was at 41. Um, then he came down to 36. Uh, Monday night prior to the meeting, I had the discussion with him and he had to verify it with uh, the Chris Catavent from WB Homes. I got them down to 32. And uh, we have questions about density and What's too in, what you know? What's intense density? If anybody wants to look at intense density, go to 9425 Stanton Avenue and look at that development. I know the circumstances in the area aren't the same, but that is an intense developed piece of property. I know that during the discussions, that, you know, when this all started, there was really no thought of anybody to make a park out of it. Those discussions started, the idea floated out there. We couldn't do it, the school district couldn't do it. That ship has sailed on that idea. It's unfortunate, but- that's Well, to, I mean, to, not to interrupt you, but to, to be absolutely, you know, perfectly clear on the park issue, it has never been fully flushed out, in my opinion. We have, we have never really addressed how much it would cost, how much it would cost the township, what they would accept, you know, it, it's, I think I believe is a concept still worth pursuing. That's my personal feeling. Sorry. Okay. So, Jonathan, me mentioned the other night to some of the residents about how our budget goes with taxing. We don't have a lot of commercial buildings in Springfield Township, good and bad, if you look at it. If we go institutional, we get a nonprofit in there. We're not going to be able to get taxes like we would townhouses. And if my math is sort of average, if they were townhouses up there, it's about $350,000 a year the township would get in taxes from that. That could keep us from raising taxes on things, and it also helps us from raising taxes. I'm pretty sure most of you all figured me out by now, but I look at issues as black and white. There's never a gray area for me. 
And I'm a believer that seeing is believing. To quote my favorite elf, Judy, from the Santa Claus, she's right. I sat on this side of the Adais years ago during the Lavrock discussions when we were looking at 60 some houses. That, yeah, more right. than that. It was more than that. The old township building was packed wall to wall, standing room only, out the door and down the hallway. You saw public opposition to the development. When the TC property came up, same thing, packed wall to wall, standing room only, out the door, down the hallway. You saw opposition to the development. We had a couple of residents come here Monday night. They say they spoke for a majority of people. Okay. I came here on that side of the Adias one time to speak for things that were going on in my neighborhood. I didn't show up by myself and say, I'm Mike Maxwell. I represent the 52 households in Brookside Road. The people that I represented that night were sitting behind me. And after two plus hours of public comment, the Board of Commissioners got our issue and where we were at. Now, I don't know what happened Monday night, but if there is this much opposition, and this is where I'm confused. If there is this much negative opposition to townhouses on Halls Lane, where were they Monday night? Because I'm telling you right now, if you're an advocate to this, you don't show up something to raise opposition with five people. And I've heard from people on my side, on your side, that they would rather prefer the townhouses to institutional. Mm -hmm. The people in favor are not going to come out and say, I'm in favor. The people that are against it are going to show up. So you're not going to have 100 people saying, I'm in favor of. But if what we're well, being respectfully, told is there were people who came. People, where are they? Respectfully, there were so, people who came up and point? said they were in favor of it. So now there's word going out, circulating on social media, God love it, as to who the prospective <clears throat> institutional companies are. Mm -hmm. And from what I'm told, I think that's pure speculation. I don't I don't don't even believe you should mention that. Okay, but I'm it's pure that. speculation. There's no well, you have nothing you have no know. you have nothing to back that up. Zero. Well, I can tell you one because I heard it from the developer's mouth in the discussion this morning where I was trying to get them down to 29 townhouses. And most of these people that are in opposition to it, I can guarantee you will probably be selling their houses to move to there because of the flooding that just occurred in that neighborhood. Yeah, and I so and I think that's one of the big issues that people have against but I'm not gonna the intense development of the piece. One of the developments is close by in a neighboring municipality. That is the prospective speculation uh, institutional building. And they got barbed wire wrapped around their facility. Do you want that next to Erdenheim Elementary? Again, it's not us to de determine the use of the of the institute of what will go on the institutional zoning. With, with the only exception being that what's allowed in our institutional zoning. And it's a fairly broad uh, 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 definition of what institutions are. But so, it, so there's no guarantee that what you heard, Michael, is, is really what will end up there or, because it hasn't been flushed out yet. We haven't, I mean, I think one of the biggest problems is, the community has, is they've been, they've been asked to give a, 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 a rendering, an opinion of what they would like more, and they know what they have. They flushed out the townhouse developments perfectly. They know how many, what it's going to look like. They got plans. They have no idea what the institution is going to look like. But how many other municipalities have you seen a developer bend over this much backwards for the community? You I, don't. I honestly don't think you this don't. developer has bent over at all. And I can also say that a lot of the mouthpieces that show up here once and you never see again that are hiding on Facebook, hiding on Erdenheim next door, a lot of what they say is speculation, unfounded, not factual to what's going on. Because we don't have all the facts because we're only looking at half the, so half the uh, pie here. I'm looking at this. What's better for that route? And I know it's not my word, but if I had to pick or choose, I'm going to pick the townhouses especially next to a school. The townhouses can also benefit with traffic. Halls Lane is a disaster traffic-wise, okay? I wish we didn't- Already it's a disaster. I wish we didn't have to file this 85th percentile because the great state of Pennsylvania is backwards in every which way there is compared to the rest of the country. 
but maybe townhouses will give us the increased traffic to add stop signs to slow the traffic down, widen the school zone, which needs to be done, or put a traffic light at Church and Halls Lane. A all all those things can be done without, on, without the uh, Hold on, I'm talking. A development. Three, a three shift institutional facility is not going to give you the traffic flow to institute these safety changes that we can't do. Again, we have no idea because we have no idea what the institution use is going to be. Correct. And you can't compare it to Harston Hole either, which some of the residents were doing here on night. I got to tell you, it's a three shift shift change facility that you don't see a lot of people going to visit anybody at Harston Hole. I don't know if anybody's been there, but I used to take the children there from St. Jen's and St. Christmas Carol's. People go there to die. It is it a deplorable facility? If there was some sort of oversight to these facilities in the state, that would be closed down because of the deplorable conditions it's in. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have a bigger piece of land to build more houses. More townhouses, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, but you can build another 38 or 40 townhouses when they Correct. close down Harston Hall. But will we be in a situation if that property was zoned de residential, which they would get more townhouses in there than what they came down to 32 last night? Would the people be going now? We don't want the institutional. Would the argument be on the other side? Again, we have no idea what the institutional use is going to be. Maybe it's going to be a high quality uh, uh, nursing home. Correct. And maybe it could be the 55 in order that he originally wanted. That wouldn't be it's that wouldn't be allowed in our in the zoning for institution. Assisted living? Assisted, Assisted living, living is right? sure. So, but we don't know what the neighbors want either because they're well, all because the neighbors have been not given a choice. The spectrum on this, Peter. Yeah, well, the, the neighbors aren't a monolith. Every, people yeah. have different opinions. And they're listening to like three mouthpieces that are completely off the radar on what's going on. And one of them was your opponent in the primary. He's completely off the rails on this. He's just cranking the pot and cranking the pot and cranking the pot. I, I, I would, encourage, I would encourage all people listening well, to, if they have questions, present them to their commissioners and we will get, we will get the answers, the correct answers for you. Mike, the one thing about Monday, just to be fair, we, we ever like, based on what we knew last week, we were announcing and it was on the agenda. Oh, I know. I know. To, to pull it. So I, I wouldn't fault someone not coming out. I, and I've had that. conversations with, the, I'm not sure if Jonathan has read that, but I've had a conversation with Brian since he had the first meeting at the country club that nobody showed up to. Nobody showed up and nobody could have cared that he was putting that facility in. Then he decided to have another meeting on the benefit of the township, not defending the guy, but he decided to have another meeting to be that guy who was looking out for his township. And somebody decided they didn't like this and they were going to crank and crank and crank and crank. And here we are two and a half years later. I'm just saying to you guys, I'm looking this way. If I had to vote on it, I'm taking the townhouses because I think it's a better idea for that spot. So that's my I'm, comments on the situation. Then what? If better, that was your, better than what? Based on what? what an institutional zone. facility that, listen, we sat down. Can you correct me if I'm wrong here? We sat on Green Hill. We stood out in the middle of the street with, what, 15, 25 people? And they pointed to the trees and said, if there's an institutional building up there, I won't see those trees. I'll see a four-story building. So do you want to see a four-story building there? Well, you want to see... And, then, and I'm not knocking mental facilities or, or drug rehab facilities, but do you want again, to have something, pure speculation? Do you want to have something there that's you know pure well, speculation? Whatever it is, it's institutional. Whatever the institution, do you want to see something there that could predict uh, uh, potentially have an impact on the school in a negative way or the neighborhood in a negative way? So, would you consider the cluster residential district for that? What A or B? No, there's a specific cluster. Like residential, AAA, right? Meant for for townhomes and and well clustered housing. Again, it's not zoned for that. I'm saying neither you, was you the, mentioned it's not zoned TC, for that. Neither was the TC track, but this board made a text amendment, changed it to the against the will of the community. I think the TC was, was I think the TC was this. always residentially zoned. The TC that the TC was was changed. And the community, but it was, was always there. residential. It wasn't institutional. Yeah. Am I right? It was never institutional. TC was never institutionally zoned. Was TC it? was zoned residential for single-family dwellings. Right. The, the yep. change allowed for Again. townhouses. And and I I bet you could get people to agree to single-family homes on that on that uh, five acres of ground. I bet you could. Easy. Talk your buddy into uh, making a uh, single-family homes. He's not my buddy. Okay. I'm just I'm he just offering. If I could just add my two cents, and I know that it's not my ward, um, but um, I, I know I, I'm in, I was in receipt of a at least 10 
uh, emails uh, asking this board to not consider developing on that land. And I guess I have the arcane uh, view of democracy that we are, we, it's not our will, but we are to represent the will of the people that elected us to this office. So having saying that, I'm going to vote as to what the residents would like to have in that, in that particular spot, because it's not my decision okay. to say that. But based on the majority of the residents, that is how my vote is going to go. I think then I think we should talk about a referendum to change this, change the zoning on this track. Then, to what? To prevent what? No, a referendum to change the zoning. We should put it out to if 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 Eddie's is the right idea, we should put it out to the entire township, saying, "What do you want to do here?" Because obviously we can't we we can't make our minds up. A lot of the, a lot of the, you're getting conflicting signals from a lot of the residents. I, I'd say, I'd say, put it up for a vote. Well, you can change the zoning, but the, but the current development or the developers are grandfathered in under the old law or the old rule, so that's not going to stop that. The, but the old rule being institutional, right? Yeah. Right. And even under the institutional, it still has to come before the board to approve. Yeah. Am I correct? No. No, that's actually not under a land development. Yeah, yeah, that's development. what it is. Yes, well, that's what I thought. You can't, a developer that's... just can't come in and say, hey, no, it's institutional. I'm putting this here and we have no insight into that. Yeah, we are not. Infinite. So but, but that's I... at the planning level, not not at the zoning level. Not Well, no. doesn't the planning, doesn't that come to the board for approval? Yeah, but but well, let I me just say, OK, go ahead. It, it just it, yes. <clears throat> yes, Eddie, you're right. Yeah, okay. that's but however. Thought. If the develop, oops, I'm sorry. If the developer complies with the zoning ordinance, they're entitled to approval. Period. Yeah, they're entitled to approval after it comes before this board, right? And we review it and we say, hey, I'm okay with that. But if we, if it, even under the institutional zoning that it's under now, if this board is not in agreement with it, then we go back to the board. They can't just say, hey, I'm building here anyway. But if they follow yeah, yeah, the clues, uh, we don't have a basis. With all due respect, that's exactly what they can do. I would challenge that. Make it, if, if, if they comply with the terms of the zoning ordinance, you don't have any discretion. Then I, I would challenge that. And I would ask whatever, I mean, whoever is the solicitor at that time to, to challenge that. Okay. Yeah. That's why I was bringing up the point of the townhouse is because we can take that option off the table. And, and Mr. President, um, echoing your eloquent kind of summation of the years that brought us to this point, um, the, the previous iteration of this board, which I guess no, nobody here was on it at that time, tried to fight it and lost those appeals in court, which is why we have what we have today, which essentially binds this process to that, that type of plan, correct? No, 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 that's over. There's there's no plan. There's no approved. My understanding, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. I will. There's no approved plan at this point in time for that tract of ground. All all of the approvals have expired. Um, there. Um, th that's not entirely correct. What what the vested rights in Section 508 of the MPC says is that basically approvals are good forever. However. They're not protected from intervening zoning changes after five years. And that five years, to my knowledge, expired July 21 of this year. So any intervening zoning changes would have uh, would now bind the property. So if we're not changing any zoning via ordinance, they can that plan is approved. No, that plan would have to come back in. It would have to come before. would have to come back in and, and get approved again because the five years has expired has expired, but it would only be subject to the zoning ordinance, which which exists on the date the plan is filed. But I think that specific plan, I think that ship has sailed and developers even said such that that's not right. really no, it's a viable, not a viable plan. plan. No, it's not. It's subject good, to the existing zoning and that's that. Yeah, it was never a right. good plan. But they but if they comply with existing zoning and we decide to change the zoning, they're still grandfathered in under this zoning, maybe not the yeah. plan. If, if they file a plan before you change the right. zoning. Yeah, right, okay. 
Okay. Correct. All right. Yeah, it's complicated. Isn't it? it is. Yeah. yeah, it's no. It's no wonder. It's no the, easy. It's, it's no, no wonder the public decision. doesn't understand it. We're not even sure we understand it. <laughs> Good point. Okay. okay. Well, any other comments on that? Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, I would like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Say nay. Okay. Please record a unanimous vote. We are adjourned. Hey. Oh, right. <laughs>